knowing what we both know about fasting, I'm 100% positive that the body healed thanks to me diverting my energy away from digestion and using it to heal as the body naturally does, tapping into this healing mode that we all have within us. And I'm, I'm curious if you yourself has, have any similar healing stories or if you encountered anything sort of similar during, during your research. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the sort of stories you're telling are the stories that appear all throughout fasting. Well, I should say all throughout the modern history of fasting. Um, these sort of, you know, anecdotes of I had X condition fasted for five days or five weeks or whatever it was, and it got better. Those stories don't really start appearing until about the 19th century. But and it's not because they weren't happening before that. We just don't have the records of them. Um, and there wasn't sort of a kind of scientific mind to uh, to record these sort of case studies in a way that 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 makes sense to us today. However, for the last, you know, 200 years and certainly the last 100 years or so, yeah, stories after stories after stories uh, like the ones that you're telling are, you know, all throughout the uh, the history of um, fasting. When you look at the writings of fasting doctors and the uh, testimonials of their patients, so it's and, and it's just just overwhelming um, the number of these stories. Um, so yeah, my own story. I ha I do have a story like that, um, and uh, as as you know, I talk about it in the book, and it's a, it was about fasting to overcome some. Uh, psychiatric and neurological uh, illnesses. Um, and it had never occurred to me to fast to try to overcome these because the long history of fasting is almost entirely talking about somatic illnesses, illnesses of the body, you know, the, the cardiovascular disease or the liver disorder or the, you know, the migraines, whatever. They're not talking about like psychiatric um, disabilities. So I had, I'm 52 now. Um, for my early 20s, I had suffered from depression um, for, uh, well, gosh, for more than a quarter century. Um, and it was kept in check um, with antidepressants, but the antidepressants are terrible. They've got um, some often quite some, you know, debilitating side effects. Um, they also um, tend to wear out. You don't go on one antidepressant, most people, and it works for the next 20 years and you're good. Um, they tend to, for whatever reason, just stop working after three or four years. Psychiatrists call it the, the Prozac poop out. Um, and so what happens when that happens is you go back into depression. Uh, it can be really severe. You know, I was nearly suicidal a few times. Um, and you're scrambling with your psychiatrist to try to find a new antidepressant that might work. Um, so, you know, I was just living in this just awful cycle for quite a while and um, getting a little worse. You know, the, the more times you have depression, the worse it tends to be. Um, so it was just it just felt like I was on a, a really downward spiral. And then I had I, I won't you know bore you with all my other conditions, but I had these other uh, conditions. A couple of them were just rare disorders. And the most interesting one, I think, was called idiopathic hypersomnia. Um, hypersomnia just means you're exhausted all the time. You want to sleep all the time. But the hell of it is, is that when you do sleep, it's not restorative. Idiopathic means the scientists and doctors do not know what caused it. They don't have a cure for it. Um, some poor people with this disease are sleeping 20 hours a day. They wake up and in the four hours that they're awake, they're stumbling around like the rest of us feel in those 30 seconds before you go to sleep at night where you just need toothpicks to prop your eyes open. That's their life. Um, mine wasn't that severe, but it was severe and it was getting worse with each year. I could not, you know, try, try it, you know, feeling that feeling you feel 30 seconds before you fall asleep at night. Try being a parent to a, you know, 12 year old uh, when you're doing that. Try being a good husband or wife. Uh, try being a good friend. Uh, try being a, a good worker. Uh, my my writing ground to a halt, my career ground to a halt. I could feel my mind almost, you know, this is going to sound hyperbolic, but disintegrating. My memory was getting worse. Uh, you know, I was getting depressed more. It was just, it was just horrible. And then, and, and as I say, it never occurred to me to fast for these disorders. But what, what saved me was about um, three or so years ago now, four years ago, um, I uh, put on too much weight over the holidays. Um, and so in uh, the new year, I decided to fast in order to take off about 15 pounds. I was going to fast a couple of weeks. 
Um, and uh, within about three, four days, my idiopathic hypersomnia just started fading. I started becoming more alert and more awake. Um, and at first I didn't think a whole lot of it because with this disease, certainly the, the way I had it, you might get a good two or three days here and there and then have a crappy two or three weeks and get another good day or two and then have a terrible six weeks or whatever. So it, it fluctuated. But what happened was as the fast went on, I, I felt better and better and better. And by the time I broke my fast, after two weeks, uh, I had spent my first week and uh, I don't know, decades without this hypersomnia. Um, and, you know, it's a long story that I uh, tell in the book, but the, but the short version is, is that I continued to, I changed, I changed my diet. Um, and when I did that, when I, because you know, I was terrified to break the fast and start eating again and see if my illness would come back. But when I did that, broke the fast, ate a much cleaner, much more pure diet, um, and the idiopathic hypersomnia just stayed away. And I was emboldened enough after a few weeks to say, well, why don't I try weaning off my antidepressants as well and see how that is? Um, and um, every time I'd done that in the past, I had crashed within a few months. Uh, it, this has now been three years, and I am uh, off every single medication that I used to take. I don't take the sleeping pills anymore. I don't take the Xanax for, for anxiety anymore. I don't take the antidepressants. I don't take the stimulants that they give you for the hypersomnia, the Ritalin and so on to kind of keep you awake during the day. All that's gone. And, you know, so, so that's a very long way of answering your question. Yeah, I do have my own healing story. And, um, and uh, that story motivated me to then go looking into the science of what do we know about what fasting does for mental health and what's going on in the brain. Uh, and I found enough, you know, information there to, to write what I hope is a compelling chapter on that. It's a beautiful story and I really appreciate you sharing it and going on to then write a book, which, which I know is a difficult endeavor and, and challenge and, and a very good one at that, which, which is no easy feat. So it's, it's all really powerful, especially given the state of the world where I know I've had my own struggles with, with depression personally. And it's, it's terrifying. It's, it, I, I just mixed two words together. Terrible and terrifying. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's all, you know, all the bad things. It's kind of just the worst, you know, way to be. And something like, um, you know, 80 to a hundred million Americans are probably suffering from, from that on a, on a pretty regular basis, just a massive, massive number of, of our fellow human beings. And, and we've got this, this very accessible, free modality, uh, you know, available, available. So I really do appreciate everything that you're doing and sharing in, in, in this realm. <laughs>